Welcome to my Beehive landing page tutorial. Here I'm going to be showing you how to create a landing page with Beehive. It's pretty straightforward and if you'd like to follow along I will leave my link in the description and if you click that you can try Beehive for free. For this specific tutorial I already have a Beehive account but I wanted to create a new one and start from scratch. That's why I'm in an incognito window just to show how you can get up and running from the beginning. Let's begin. So. When you are on your dashboard, what you want to do is go to the design section, click on the little carrot or arrow there, and from there go to website builder. Now, I did a tutorial about this probably less than a year ago at the time of creating this, and they used to have a specific section called like a landing page builder or something similar to that. They removed it, so now everything is just under website builder. Okay, so in case you were curious, that's where it's going to be. Let's go there now. All right, so in terms of the styles, this is gonna be a lot of the aesthetics here. One of the most important things that you might wanna change is gonna be your logo and identity, which is right here. But if you click right here, what you can do is go to the publication settings, which I'm gonna open up in a new tab. And this is gonna be where you can add in your logo. This is something I have done, plus like the publication name, your address, anything else. This is gonna be obviously for the landing page, so I'm not gonna go into detail with that, but that is where you update your logo so that it shows up on your landing page, okay? Now the biggest things here, there are gonna be the a lot of the aesthetic stuff, which is pretty self-explanatory. I do wanna go over the layout. This, this is gonna be like what your landing page looks like. All right, so starting off, we have our global navigation layout. You're probably not gonna be needing a lot of this in case you are just getting started. But if you'll notice with a lot of these things here, what you can do is turn them on and turn them off in case you're not really sure what they do right off the bat. This one's pretty straightforward as it says, show the login button on desktop navbar. So what you can do is turn that off, it's gonna disappear and turn it on. We also have some navigation menu groups. So you can customize your menu groups, menu group pages, and connect them to internal or external pages, okay? You also have standalone pages and what this is going to allow you to do where if you want to create a specific page where they can go there and maybe get something, reach out to you, you would click on add page here. You would create it and that's where you can connect it ultimately. I'm not going to go through that process because obviously you can do a lot there. You could do about us, you could do contact, you could do testimonials, whatever it's going to be, right? We also have draft pages where you can add internal or external pages to your website or navigation bar, but this is going to be the draft version. Okay, so not a lot going on there in terms of what's going to be happening on your landing pages, but as we go on, it's going to get a little bit deeper. So we have the page theme here. There's going to be styles. This is all the settings right here in case you want to change that around. Background. This is where you can change that around. I prefer having the white, clean, simple. Looks good to me. We have our logo enabled right here. We have the size. We have shadow. This is going to be a big section right here. It says James's newsletter, but I'm going to do marketing island newsletter. And once you add it in and like click off, it's going to show saved and then it's going to change. And this is going to be something where a call to action is going to be helpful. So for example, all right, so enter your best email below to get all the latest news and updates in the world of online marketing. You notice how there's a call to action too where it says enter your best email. That means they can actually go down there and do that, which is a good thing. Of course, this is gonna be some of the other stuff. So we have like the heading color and we have the other colors too if you wanted to change those. Once you start adding more text in there, it's probably gonna be a little bit better because then you can change things around. But we were right here. We have our author widget in case you didn't wanna have that in there, but we don't have any specific uh, blog posts, excuse me, or newsletters written yet that are shown as blog posts, so nothing is going to be there. If you want to customize that, you certainly can. Like name would be, so name would be James Canzanella as an example. Last but not least is going to be a social widget, which this is one of those examples where you turn it on, you turn it off, but you can't quite see what is being turned on and turned off. So sometimes you just have to use a little guessing of like, what's going on here? Do I need this? I haven't personally seen any use for it, so I'm going to keep that off. Let's go back right here. Next, we have the posts section, okay? So what you can do is add a featured post. You can do the latest post, which that's something I'd probably recommend. You know, we could say latest post, newest post, post you might wanna read. So fresh post, we could do like marketing post since it's Marketing Island. And I think that's gonna be the best settings for it overall. If you have one specific newsletter or post that you've done and you wanna highlight that or add it to the featured, I'd recommend doing that. As you do more over time, you're probably gonna realize one that maybe a lot of people like to read, maybe you get a lot of engagement, maybe you get sales, whatever it's going to be, you could definitely feature it right there. But since this is a new account, there aren't any at the time, that's where you would do that. Let's go back. We also have the side widget section. 
Okay, in case you wanted to utilize any of these with the widgets, there's authors, there's sign up, there's categories, and there's social. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think you really need to use these. Like we're signing up right here. In terms of the archive, you can have categories. Authors is already going to be there, and there's sign ups all over the place. You have one there, you have one there. So, in my opinion, not necessarily needed, but if you want to play around with that, you can. And of course, we have the archive section. So, this is going to be the text. So, check out these killer posts. You'll notice how that changed right there. So that's where it's gonna be. If you want to make the font a little bit smaller, so we can do like 3XL, I don't think it needs to be four, right? That looks a little bit better. You can also change it what it's gonna look like, whether it's gonna be grid or list. I think grid looks better. So it depends on how you want it to do. I'd say load more, it would probably be good. So you don't have a ton of them all at once. Header text, button color, aesthetics type of stuff and going back. So as you're gonna notice here, the biggest thing is gonna be mostly the hero section. You have your logo, you have your newsletter, what you're all about with a little call to action. And the good thing in my opinion is that your landing page is gonna be updated automatically as you send out more newsletters. They're gonna be added here. And of course, if you get a really good one, you can really feature and focus it. There are gonna be some other settings in case you want to utilize that. For example, we have a lot of pixel here. There's going to be some SEO stuff. A lot of this is self-explanatory, even like with comments. So if you put this here, you can put a uh, comment section on here if you want to utilize that. Uh, that's going to be up to you. Like I said, you could do that probably. You could even do polls maybe for each specific newsletter. I personally wouldn't put comment section on a landing page. Normally the idea here is to focus on this and getting subscribers. And I understand that there are gonna be other articles and posts under there, but at least when they click on them, there's also an emphasis to get them sign up on those as well. So I feel that's gonna be like the leanest way to creating a landing page. That's pretty much gonna conclude this tutorial when it comes to building a landing page with Beehive. I hope you got some value out of this. It's pretty straightforward. There aren't a lot of settings when it comes to their landing page and the Beehive editor, but I think that's pretty fine. I've done a separate video that showcases is examples of a lot of success stories when it comes to building these newsletters and many times they're nothing special and it's really most about getting the perfect audience to your landing page because when they see something that they like they're probably going to sign up anyway but if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below if you got any value out of this video be sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps me out a lot as well and if you are still here i do have a free gift in the description where it will help you with more resources to help you build and grow your online business my name is james thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video video.